What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Thoughts episode. Today, we are going to be ranking WWE Elite Series 110 from worst to best. Got a pretty good set right here, man. We're going to dive into all my thoughts about it. If you guys don't know what My Damn Thoughts is, basically, I give my damn thoughts. I give my thoughts from my brain about this set of a roll. We break down some different categories. We describe the best and worst of the set. And at the end, we will rank this entire way from the worst figure or my least favorite figure to the best or my favorite figure overall because my favorites are the best, as we all know. That's just a joke. Get your undies out of your room. But today, man, we're going to be breaking down some different things, starting off with my first thoughts. Now, I remember, I want to say that we knew that Elite 110 contained these figures a while before we saw them because usually that's what happens in the news. We typically understand or learn what a set is going to contain before it is officially revealed to us. You know, that's the importance of the news videos and breaking down all the things that we learn beforehand. And on paper, I remember being pretty intrigued with this set because I saw that it was going to be Roman Reigns and Rhea Ripley. I saw that it was going to be Theory and we had some cool stuff going on. A brand new Pete Dunne. There were some good things coming. And so when I first thought, my first thoughts on the learning the wave before I saw the figures was I was pretty hyped. After seeing the wave, I was kind of on the fence. And we'll dive into all those things and kind of discuss what we feel here. Of course, we know that the lore about this Roman Reigns, I guess I can start this video off discussing the Roman Reigns figure just because I initially thought that this figure was going to be something that it is not. I thought that it would contain the Undisputed Championship, which it did. I thought that it would have the brand new faded tapered beard. It did not. It was not accurate. And I thought that it would probably be in a promo style Roman Reigns. We had seen so many top picks, so many mainline, you know, two ultimate editions in this look for Roman. I thought for sure this would be a track suit or some sort of promo attire with a man bun and look really awesome with the Undisputed Championship, maybe the Thousand Day Reign. And it was not. It was just your standard run-of-the-mill Roman. But I can say that I do like the figure. I think that the head sculpt was very impressive. Now, I have since repainted it. It looks much better now that I've repainted it, and I'm not going to take that into account when ranking it, because repainted, it looks really awesome, and the forehead is small, but we'll we'll get into all that, man. But I had to start off by talking about the Roman Reigns, because people think that I just despise this Roman Reigns. I was upset with the Roman Reigns initially, because when I saw it at WrestleMania, it was not what I expected, and I set myself up for that. That is my fault, but I think the execution of this Roman Reigns is good. But let's, let's dive into it, man. Let's start off with, after my first thoughts. I th that was my first thoughts. I had two different thoughts there. You had the one on paper, which I was hyped for, and then you had the execution of it, which I was kind of on the fence. So let's dive into what I think the shelf warmer of this set's going to be. And honestly, it's very difficult because you have a lot of different elements, but at the end of the day, you can let me know what, the, what your take is on this. But I thought at the end of the day, I truly think it's going to be pretty, pretty deadly. I, I think pretty deadly will be the shelf warmers of the set. Just because they're the exact same, I think that hurts figures a lot when two figures are identical like this. For whatever reason, that tends to be the case. If you make two figures that are like identical like this, they seem to want to shelf warm for some reason. We've seen this in the past. I think the Nasty Boys shelf warm pretty good. At least from in my area, they did. Also, the the Los Matadors also did. And I know it's the Los Matadors. Okay, I understand. It was Elite 35. There's a lot of stuff going on there. It's just, that was definitely a thing back in the day. But outside of that, I think of all the names here, these are the least known guys, you know? And I know that people don't tend to collect female figures as much as male figures, but Rhea Ripley is an insta-purchase. She's in that category above where she is going to be treated like a main event star. She's on that. I would put her in the same category as your, you know, those Cody Rhodes figures and those Roman Reigns figures, I would put her figure right up there, man. I think a lot of people are going to want Rhea Ripley. I really do. So I think Rhea Ripley stands above. Bruno is a flashback that comes with a really cool accessory. Pete Dunn's updated. Haven't had a Pete Dunn in double jointed arms before. Really cool figure. Theory looks awesome. And Roman Reigns kind of speaks for itself, right? So I think that pretty deadly. They will probably be the more shelf warming of the entire set. Now, when you want to talk about the hottest figures in the set, I think this is pretty straightforward. It's going to be these two right here. You got one, one man, one woman. I think Roman Reigns and Rhea Ripley both are going to be very hot off the shelves. People are going to want this Roman Reigns. They always are. It's got the title with it. I mean, that right there is going to push units, man. People are going to want that championship officially from Mattel. Rhea Ripley, it is an updated, accurate Rhea Ripley. The best Rhea Ripley they've ever made. This is the best Rhea Ripley action figure ever made. This one's going to fall off the, off the shelves as well. Both of these, if you picked either one, I think if I, you know, you know, if I'm, if a mugger came up and had a gun to my head and said, you have to pick between these two, which one's going to sell out faster? I would pick Roman Reigns just because of the championship. I think, you know, game on the line, Roman Roman Reigns would be the hottest figure, but Rhea Ripley is not far behind in that category, I don't think. Now, when we get into the chase figure in the set, that is going to be Butch slash Pete Dunne. He's always been Pete Dunne to me. I've never once called him 
Butch. But yeah, it's going to be Pete Dunne. He is in a green color, which I think is cool. I definitely want that figure. I got to track that figure down. I think I the other day I went through my Chase collection and I kind of broke it down. I'm not missing that many. You know, I, I give myself a hard time like missing a bunch of Chase figures, but I have a decent amount of them. So I, I actually was more proud of myself. I was like, oh man, I actually have way more than I think. So we are going to try and track down that green attire, but uh, I like it. I, I'm glad that we get two different Pete Dunn's. I think that's really cool. So Pete Dunn is the Chase. I think that the standard and the white is better, but the green is certainly a really cool figure and I do like it and appreciate it. But that is our Chase figure in this set. Now we're getting into our best head sculpt. Now there's a bunch of ways you could play this. You could say Roman Reigns, but I think when it's not painted correctly, it's not the best in my opinion. I went with the Theory head sculpt. I actually went with the Theory head sculpt. And this one's pretty good, man. And I know that it just recently came on a battle pack. And you could say that it's not new. And if you were to say that, if you were to say, if you don't qualify this Theory as a brand new head sculpt, then I would say that it is Roman Reigns. But I like the Theory head sculpt a lot. I like the thick beard in there. He's looking pretty good. Chin may be a little bit long, but I think not painted correctly. I think the Roman Reigns just doesn't get the job done. And plus his forehead's a little short. So I did go with Austin Theory here, who looks like a classmate of mine from back in the day, who unfortunately did get addicted to drugs. But we are moving on to our best articulation segment. And there's some really good figures in here that actually move around quite well. But at the end of the day, I actually have to give it to Theory again. Theory's figures is... I'm trying to compare it to somebody. Who is it like? It is like... There are just... There, there's some people that no matter how you make their figures... They just kill it, man. And I think that this theory is one of those. He's on ball joints. He does have pinless legs, so it does make him a bit stiff. But if you own an Austin Theory, you know how well they pose around and how good they feel in hand. They're just one of those good figures, man. It's like Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is a good example. He's on ball joints. He has really clean joints. Poses around nice. Nice ab crunch. You're not going to pose him around and feel like he's going to snap in half, which is always a bonus. So Theory is easily the best articulation. I like that Theory a lot. And I'm not even really a big Theory fan, but guess what, man? That figure is pretty sweet. I do like the Theory figure, and it poses around the best out of all these figures in this set. Now, worst articulation out of the male figures, it would probably be pretty deadly. I think their legs are a bit stiff, and they do have those Heath Slater-style legs, which are kind of upsetting. But at the end of the day, the worst overall articulation is going to be Rhea Ripley. You know, she is a female figure, so she, her ab crunch is not the best. She does have, like, that diaphragm movement. But at the end of the day... She does have the worst articulation. She can't kick forward that much because of the way her legs are designed, which also bothers me. But she's pretty buttery smooth. Like, for a female figure, she can still pose around well. Just out of the rest of our set here, she does have the worst articulation. And that's why I threw in a little anecdote there that the pretty deadly figures also don't pose around the best out of the, all the men's figures. If you were to compare the men's to the men's, the pretty deadly figures would be the worst in terms of posing them around. That, that figure, or those figures, this is kind of how I judge the worst articulation, the best articulation. It's the figure that I would have the most joy or the least amount of frustration posing around in the arena doing some sort of fed style match. Austin Theory would be the most joyous to pose around, the one that I have the most fun with because he can do some cool things, versus the Rhea Ripley or the Pretty Deadly figure. So that's how that category kind of comes to fruition. And then we're getting into our best accessory, man. The best accessory in this set. Now this is kind of, I don't know, this is kind of a cheap. You guys can let me know what you think here. Of course, we had some cool cloth goods, right? We had the Pretty Deadly shirts that I thought were pretty damn cool. We have the football jersey or the you know the shirt whatever you want to say that comes with Pete Dunne an awesome accessory not as fitting I wish that it had no velcro and it would have been you know tight fit to the to the biceps of the Pete Dunne but at the same time we also had some championships we had the undisputed title we had the U.S. title from Theory which we've seen we had the smaller version of the Smackdown Women's Championship from Rhea Ripley which we've seen before but for me personally, the best accessory is going to be the podium with Bruno San Martino, which you could say, oh, it's not new. It's not a new accessory. It doesn't count. Well, for me, I'm counting it because it's that damn good. It's a great accessory. I love little things like this that add to your displays and everything. There's so many usages you could use here. You could use this as a regular display table in an office if you pop the mic off. This could easily be a piece there. You could pop the mic in there and hold a damn banquet, have a buffet for your figures and do an award ceremony. There's so many things that you could do with this style uh, little base here this little podium this mic with a, this podium with the mic is such a good accessory and it looks so modern I like the sleek glass look just a great accessory overall that I love this accessory I had to include it I don't care if they've released it 12 times it's still good you know what I mean at the end of the day if it's not broke don't fix it it's really fun man I, I don't know what you want from me Bradley I think that's damn good but that is the best accessory for me personally it's
it's going to be the podium. Let's get these figures out of here and let's rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now again, we got to break down the criteria for this ranking. Just because a figure comes in at number seven doesn't mean that it doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. And just because a figure's number one doesn't mean that it's without any faults. Just because it's number one does not mean that it's going to be one of the best figures of the year. Just because it's number one doesn't mean that it's just the greatest figure I've ever seen and that I wouldn't improve it in some way or change something about it. So there are those things, man. But let's get into our thing. Starting out at number seven. And at number seven, I am going to go with the Kit Wilson figure. But guess what? These guys are virtually the exact same figure. So I did go, I think I went with Kit Wilson at the bottom and then Elton Prince at number six. I think it's because I didn't like the inconsistency between the head sculpts with the, you know, with the chin strap or the beard. So I went with Elton Prince above Kit Wilson. That's just how I you know, ranked in my head, because these figures are pretty much the exact damn same. There's nothing different about these guys, but I think I liked the Elton Prince a little bit more, and so I did put that there. I liked the normal head sculpt for Elton better than Kit, I think. I, that's what I decided on, I believe, in my brain, so we'll go with that, but those are two bottom figures right there. Coming in at the number five spot, I am going with the Bruno San Martino figure. Lots of different things to discuss with this figure, but I think, first of all, it is a re-release, okay? It is a re-release. It's a repaint. Not much really going on with it. The only thing different is the addition of, you know, the new shoulder mold or the new arms. You do have double jointed arms, right? You do have a repaint of the trunks from the blue to the green. I actually prefer the blue, so I think that, you know, the attire was better on the old one. And he does have some bomb accessories, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't, I think it's cool to have a Bruno, and I think that this figure should exist. It's just not one that I was particularly excited about, even though I, I could see the reasoning behind the release. I understand it. Just not my favorite figure of all time. So I did go there with our uh, Bruno San Martino figure. Coming in at number four. Number four, I am going with the Roman Reigns figure. Now, it's kind of upsetting that this figure is here because I've actually grown to really like this figure. But all in all, everything from the neck down is the same thing we've seen over and over again in terms of sculpt. We have seen this exact Roman Reigns figure play out multiple times. I think that, you know, adding the red boots is cool, but it's still the same mold. I know that we have an Ultimate Edition that's the same. It is an Elite Equivalent, whatever. I know that he comes with the Undisputed Championship. I think the yellow, like, it's too yellow, probably, for my liking. It's not too terrible, and I don't think it looks bad, per se, but I don't know. I, I just love the Custom Championship so much now that it's difficult. But at the same time, I think if the head sculpt was painted correctly, this figure would have been way higher. And had this figure been accurately done in the beard and fade and taper and all of that different stuff, he would probably be number one just because of my excitement level for it. You know, I've been been waiting on that for so very long and this figure did disappoint me however I don't think this figure is bad really in any way I just think because we've seen these same things over and over again that I have to rank it as such and I did have to repaint it I mean I, I did repaint this head sculpt it is looking a lot better it's more accurate whatever it didn't look that good beforehand so I do have to take that into account and I do like this Roman Reigns I really do like this Roman but I do have him at number four here in the rest of the wave. Coming in at our number three spot is going to be Theory. Now this one honestly pains me a little bit because I think this is really good. The only thing that really docks this figure is I think the arms are too small. I think he should have probably the, he, these style shoulders. I think he should have bigger shoulders and bigger arms. I think they make him too small. I do love the new torso. I like everything going on here. The head sculpt's good, all those things. I do wish the gear was different. It's not my favorite gear, but at the end of the day, this figure's still damn good. It poses around very well. And I'm not just not that big of a theory fan. So, you know, my excitement level wasn't that big. I did, I was excited for it, but just not to the level of some other people's in the set. Other people's. In at number two, we're going with my man Pete Dunn, man. I'm a big Pete Dunn fan, always been a very big Pete Dunn fan. So getting a new double jointed updated articulation, nice Pete Dunn is so underrated. I love the Elite 75. I love the Elite 64 even more. But at the end of the day, this figure right here is just, it's awesome. I love it. I think it looks so damn good. I'm so happy to have an updated Pete Dunn. I know it's in Brawling Brutes gear, but it doesn't bother me that much. You know, I'm not paying attention to the gear that much in terms of the graphics. You know, I love the white attire. I love that it's Pete Dunn, so that, and it looks good. It looks just like him, so I have been uh, picking that guy up and posing him around. I enjoy the Pete Dunn figure a whole lot, but that only leaves one, and you guys already know, <laughs> Mommy is always on top, I guess they do say. So Rhea Ripley does come in at number one. I mean, there's lots to unpack here. Rhea Ripley, probably my favorite women's talent in the entire roster. So you have Rhea Ripley there, updated. They actually took the, you know, took the critique from her previous figure 
They updated her sculpt. They updated, you know, the, the broadness of her shoulders. They made it look more realistic and accurate to Rhea Ripley, which is something we've been begging for. They finally did so. It contains a lot of her tattoos. Still would have liked to have seen the sternum tat. I'm going to hold out. Hopefully, the Ultimate Edition will have the sternum tat. But the white gear, you guys know I love white gear if you're a fan of the channel or if you've been around for any amount of time. I love white attires. The Pete Dunn is in white attire. The Rhea Ripley's in white attire. I just think it's so good. I think it looks awesome. And this was such a much needed update that Rhea Ripley is. I mean, really? Uh, it's really not. I guess it's decently close, but I think she was easily my favorite figure in the set. I think it's that damn good. It's a really good Rhea Ripley figure, and I'm excited to finally have that in the collection. Finally get rid of that ugly custom. Finally get rid of those terrible Rhea Ripleys we've seen. So this was a very nice update, man. But that is my entire my damn thoughts on WWE Elite Series 110. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know what you guys think of these down in the comment section below, of course. But let me know all of your thoughts on Elite 110 and rank them yourselves down in the comment section below, of course. But anyways, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the video. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellas over there. Thank you guys so very much for your support, as always. You guys are absolutely goaded. But I'm getting the hell out, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>